Good evening, everyone. I am Sean Oliver, the Executive Assistant at Tropical Fed Inc. A delightful welcome to all the viewers, supporters, and well-wishers to this very notable and educational program, namely Authors Connecting. As we all know, the Authors Connecting is a program designed to emphasize the importance of literacy and how culture can influence education. Today, we have Mr. Cordin Lees, who hails from Northeast England, but currently resides in the nature isle of the Commonwealth of Dominica, which is my country of birth. Cordin Lees is a poet whose metaphoric language is debonair at heart. He regards nature as being one of the underpinning beauties that is produced by the Commonwealth of Dominica. This is evident in his way of words used to describe the greenery of the island. Throughout this interview, we will have a live reading of a poem written by Mr. Lees, namely Dominica Sublime. This poem can be viewed online. Viewers can simply type in um, Dominica Sublime on Google, where they will have a chance to read such a soothing and descriptive poem. At this point in time, we are about to play a clip of Mr. Lee reading his poem titled Dominica Sublime. Greetings to all those watching and listening. My name is Colin. I'm a well-travelled Brit from Tyneside. In the summer of 1997, with my wife and our two young boys, we relocated from where we had been living in the southeast of England to the East Caribbean island of Dominica, not to be confused with the Spanish-speaking Dominican Republic. Despite some of the difficulties associated with living in a small island nation, Dominica has become our home in every respect. I am about to recite to you a ballad that I wrote in May 2021, which I have called Dominica Sublime. Dominica is a special place with nature all around, where waterfalls are plentiful, so soothing is their sound. Massive trees with buttress roots tower up to the sky before spreading out their canopy to shade us from on high. The forest that surrounds us is every shade of green, with blossoms adding colour, this is an artist's dream. Zelmouche on the forest floor, heliconia leaves reach up, sweet nectar from their splendid flowers, the hummingbirds will sup. Parrots fly above us, they flit from tree to tree, whilst foraging for nuts and fruit, squawking noisily. Agoutis scour the forest floor, rummaging for food, whilst manikoo sleep in the trees, at night when they come good. Bromeliads and orchids decorate the trees, collecting moisture from the air. You can feel the forest breeze. A stick insect you may observe, if your eyes are keen, or mullets swimming happily in a nearby stream. Tree lizards are a common sight, they call them zandoli. When males stick out their orange bib, that is a sight to see. Abelos are larger, the ground is their domain. They like to chase each other, the speed they move is insane. Green and grey iguanas look from a bygone time, prehistoric in appearance, on our crops they like to dine. Whilst geckos cream with rounded toes patrol our walls at night, their dark eyes sharp, a moth they spot, then quickly pounce and bite. Gliding through the undergrowth, the grass snake wends its way, looking for a cricket or a bug on which to prey. Boas are enormous and in many trigger fear, but in fact they are quite harmless, that's the reality. Herons stalk the rivers, seeking crabs on which to dine, whilst titiwi the shadows climb, thousands in a line. That cackling that fills the air, a kingfisher is there, or that distant note so haunting from the lonely solitaire. As the day begins to warm, the frigate birds appear, rising on the thermals, circling far and near. Pelicans glide just offshore, where abound young fish, 
Then suddenly they plunge and splash to catch a tasty dish. Butterflies are all around to watch them is such fun. Their wings spread out like solar cells, harvesting the sun. When perched upon a pretty flower, feeding looks quite hard. To reach that tasty nectar, their tongues curl out so far. Sunsets are a wondrous sight, there are no two alike. Descending o'er the ocean, taking with it our daylight. When the skyline has no clouds, we look for the green flash. A golden yellow shrinking spot turns green, then quick it's past. The sky begins to darken, the birds all go to roost to be replaced by flying mice, which also have a use. Those radar ears of bats detect the sound of tiny wings. They hoover up mosquitoes, devour those pesky things. With air so clear, the evening sky becomes a wondrous sight. A million stars are there to see, twinkling so bright. The constellations can be seen, bright is Orion's belt. A shooting star, that streak of light, a meteorite doth melt. A spot of light is moving fast, it is a satellite. And when the moon is overhead, it's almost like daylight. Flashing lights of green and red, a plane is on its way, bringing tourists from afar to enjoy a sunny stay. When sun and earth and moon align, there is a shadow cast. The moon blocks out the sunshine, light dims until it's past. Or when the shadow of the earth is cast upon the moon, in full its colour changes, just like a red balloon. The moon above the ocean sends a thousand shards of light, reflecting on a rippled sea, the waves they dance so bright. Then there's the nighttime chorus, cicadas in the trees, the crickets chirp, and when it rains, they, the tweet of frogs sounds sweet. As the night time ebbs away, the cooing doves begin. Distant roosters start to crow. The birds all start to sing. The day begins, the sky is clear. The air, it feels so fresh. It's time for breakfast, local juice, bananas, pork or flesh. Volcanoes are our backbone. They're peak reach up so high. So many in one tiny spot, earth's moving plates so wide. Telltale signs are all around, hot springs we so adore. Tiny bubbles like champagne rise from the ocean floor. Clouds of steam are swirling from the churning, boiling lake. Though getting there is quite a hike, it's an effort all should make. The scenery is splendid, up slopes, ahead we forge. Once back we soak our tired limbs in the Titu Gorge. At Shardia, the water's deep, you can high dive from the side, or enter from the stream above on nature's water slide. A mouth in circles in the sky, scouting from above, its telescopic eyes seek out a lizard or a dove. The long and winding roads traverse our steep topography, and from above that forest cloak makes them so hard to see. At last we reach a mountain pass, we stop our eyes to feast. The Caribbean sea lies west, the Atlantic to the east. And in between a landscape of colour bathed in sun, our cameras click, we take our snack, the tour has just begun. As we pass through farmlands, the workers can be seen, tending crops of pineapple, bananas or dasheen. Saturday is market day, with fruit and veg piled high. Round vendors' stalls the public throng their groceries to buy. Sundays is when friends meet up, on a west coast beach, or a picnic by the river. There's always one in easy reach. The fishermen bring in their catch, into a conch they blow. The fish is ready to be sold, it lets the locals know. We see a ferry moving past, 
a white tail in its wing. To Guadalupe or Martinique, it's a trip we like to make. And in the ocean waters, whales and dolphins play. A giant turtle comes ashore, in the sand its eggs to lay. Snorkeling is also fun, the western sea is calm. It's like another world down there, it's the water's clear and warm. The western world we left behind, strangers rarely say hello. Here it's different, greetings flow, almost everywhere you go. Your car might have a problem, you stop to see what's wrong. Those passing often offer help, it's fixed before too long. In abundance, talent flows in music and the arts. When Mikhail sings, it always lifts our spirits and our hearts. Forest scenes are reproduced on canvas for our walls. In harmony, a choir sings, rejuvenates our souls. Carnival is always fun for young and old alike. Steel pans ring out our favourite songs. The music comes alive. The costumes are amazing. Queen contestants lead the way. We gaze up at stilt walkers. It's a colourful array. When Creole time arrives each year, there's lots to see and do. Fashion shows, Miss Wob Duet, all in Madras costume. On Creole day, we all dress up and go to work that way. Then three nights of live music go on until next day. Jazz and Creole in the park is a summertime event. Outdoors in the afternoon, the music's heaven sent. Cannons line the rampart at this historic fort, where in the past the French and English many battles fought. Sometimes our lives are threatened by the actions of mankind. A hurricane approaches, safe shelter we must find. When it hits, the rivers roar, bridges wash away, roofs blow off and buildings flood, it's a course we have to stay. Once the weather eases, we assess the aftermath, the damage that we must repair in the wake of nature's wrath. Restoring can be costly, we all must toil and sweat. We try to help each other whilst descending into debt. A year has passed, the roads are patched, our power lines restored, the buildings we repaired are now much stronger than before. Despite the climate turmoil that the future holds in store, this period paradise is still our home. We couldn't wish for more. But then the unexpected, a deadly virus strikes. The outside world is falling sick. We've never known the light. Western leaders in a tiz, chasing round like dizzy flies. Unprepared and ill-equipped, the blame game now applies. Here we had some common sense, our ports were quickly closed. Strict testing on arrival and quarantine for most. Our neighbours acted likewise, but soon became blasé. Allowing back the cruise ships, now they're in a bad way. As I write, we flourish still, though patience is the key. The vaccine rollout's going well, so soon we should feel free to throw away our face masks and once again shake hands, to get a hug from Grandma and not avoid our friends. Our leaders, they have acted well, it's safety first, we know. Our health is more important than tourists in Roseau. For all those wishing from outside to share our paradise, a spell in isolation first, they know that is the price. The time has flown since we moved here two dozen years ago. The garden trees we planted, it's been fun to watch them grow. So as I write, I can reflect, our lives are surely blessed. Dominica has a special charm, in nature we caress. This planet that we live on right now is under threat. Beyond our shores, eternal growth is the trend we must forget. Our 
species has to change its ways for our children to survive. The future's plan we must construct for our planet to revive. A billion years of nature's way made possible mankind. Diversity is the key to life, a solution we must find. To overcome the power that growth, greed and wealth now wields requires a total reset, some comforts we must yield. A distant empire is in decline, crumbling at the core. Balance needs to be returned between the rich and poor. A monster of financial might relies on distant wars. This can only be undone with democracy restored. We watch this pantomime play out as the years roll by. From our semi-isolation upon the nature isle, we live our life in harmony. That's why I pen this rhyme. Dominica, Eden's best, is paradise sublime. I wrote this ballad in May 2021, at which time Dominique had done a brilliant job at keeping COVID at bay. But in the summer, a relaxation of protocols coincided with the more deadly Delta uh, variant, and, uh, and that changed the whole scenario. So I then added an update, which I'm going to read to you now. Since writing this, the cruise ship blight again infests our shores, inviting deadly Delta to march right through the door. Delta has evolved with stealth to sneak past all our checks, remaining dormant long enough to bypass many tests. So vaccinated carriers, they travel unaware that they transmit the virus ships bring in from elsewhere. Whilst we are under curfew, locked down in our home, this cargo moves across the land, our sights they're free to roam. For 18 months we kept it out, we thought we'd won the fight. Now Delta lurks among the crowd, hiding out of sight. It's waiting in the shadows for those without a jab, delivered by a loved one or the driver of a cab. No one here has fallen ill from getting vaccinated, but there's an anti-vax campaign, facts misrepresented. Maybe those arriving should be kept a little longer and cruise ships are of prime concern as they now pose a danger. A sad day just a week ago, Covid's first victim. A lady we all knew and liked, our future now looks grim. We need to act in unison to keep this thing at bay. Then Dominica might prevail, for that we hope and pray. Uh, by the end of the year, the Covid situation had improved drastically. So then I did a final update of three more verses on January the 10th. The Delta surge has left its mark, 47 down. Now 2022 is here. This is the final round. Omicron has taken charge. It swept the rest away. A variant less potent has come to save the day. Infections they are soaring, but deaths are going down. Far less people getting sick. Relief is felt all round. We can't avoid exposure, with vaccine or without. But now the risk is minimised. This virus has no clout. For this we have to thank the mice where Omicron evolved. Before returning it to us, pandemic now resolved. A few more months of caution whilst Omicron makes hay and then our lives will be returned, our masks will toss away. For anyone interested this poem can be read online at the URL dominica.nu where it is also illustrated with a nice array of photographs and at the end by a few links to COVID related items. Thank you. Wow, I have never heard such a descriptive analysis of Dominica. So Mr. Lees, can you please tell me and the viewers, of course, 
what inspired you to move to Dominica and where are you from originally? Well, uh, originally I'm a, a Geordie from Tyneside, northeast of England, Newcastle upon Tyne. But um, <clears throat> I've lived uh, quite a lot of my life abroad. I moved to Africa in uh, 1970. I spent six years in South Africa, eight years in Kenya. Um, and then I toured Canada and the States, worked in Long Beach, California for a while. And I went to New Zealand and Australia and toured there and worked in Brisbane for a while. But um, in the um, in the mid in the mid eighties, Britain was going through a boom, and um, I'd met my wife to be Cecily, who's um, uh, originated from Barbados. She she was went to England when she was about four. Her dad was working on the Jaguar production line, and she was brought up in Coventry, and then uh, trained as a as a uh, a lawyer in uh, in London. But anyway, we. Um, we kind of hit it off and um, we spent 10 years back in England. Ah. Um, but we decided we wanted a change of lifestyle. We'd visited uh, Martinique, um, Barbados, where we were courting. And um, on our honeymoon, we visited um, Grenada, St. Lucia, Guadeloupe. And um, we kind of like the idea of Guadeloupe because it was uh, still part of a French territory and part of the EU. So I came out for a bit of a recce in 1976. And on my way there from Antigua, in the in-flight magazine, I read about Dominica and it really interested me. And so when I was in Guadeloupe, I noticed that they, were, they, they had a ferry that was going several times a week. So I scheduled my last um, week in Dominica um, and just fell in love with the place. And yeah. a year later, we all arrived cold, <laughs> but uh, it was the best move we, we ever made. We've been here 25 years and haven't regretted a moment of it. Uh, I love to hear that. So can, what can you tell me that um, captured your interest in the lifestyle and culture of Dominica? What do you love about it? Well, mainly the fact that it's not overdeveloped and that there is still a lot of, you know, wild forests, a lot of which is still basically untouched. <laughs> and uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful. It's, uh, it's um, uh, very rich in life, rich in nature. And uh, and we 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 thoroughly enjoy our lives here. Spend a lot of time in the garden. We bought a small farm up in uh, in uh, um, Newfoundland, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where we, we we go to. To it was part of a banana plantation, but now we grow things like pawpaws, uh, mummy apples, um, mangoes, passion fruit, pineapples. So we really have a nice time there, and uh, and uh, of course, it's always it's always um, enjoyable to have a, a swim in the river whilst we're yeah. whilst we're there, you know. <laughs> but yes. yeah, Dominica, Dominica is a very inspiring place, and I think it's very easy if you live here and you're not um, have no way to compare it to to kind of take it for granted. Mm -hmm. but, you mm -hmm. know, when you like me, you've seen different parts of the world overdeveloped, underdeveloped. Um, there's just no way I like it, really. <laughs> okay, so what can you say? So you spoke about traveling to Barbados and Martinique, England. What can you say um, puts Dominica on your number one on your list? What about Dominica that you can say that seeing that Dominica is honestly an under, underdeveloped country, what captured you to stay here in Dominica as compared to a more advanced and developed country? Well, it's just um, a lot of things, really. I mean, at least even though people are busy and they're struggling to make ends meet, they still make time for each other. <laughs> I can't go into Roseau without, you know, saying hi to several people I know and, you know, and uh, as I said in the poem, you know, your car breaks down, 
somebody's going to stop and help you. Yes, yes. So is it safe to say that you would recommend someone to visit and perhaps stay in Dominica? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Okay, <laughs> so you mentioned that you have um, a plantation where you, you know, you grow crops. Um, uh, is this, uh, do you grow crops for your personal use or do you sell, or as we say in Dominica, hoxtering? Do you encounter in, ho in hoxtering by any chance? No, it's basically for our own consumption. Obviously, if we have a big crop of something, we'll uh, we'll um, maybe offload it on one of the hotels. But on the whole, it's basically for our own benefit. We farm totally naturally, no artificial fertilizers, no herbicides, no pesticides, mm. and, and we value that kind of clean eating. You know. Oh, that's great to hear. So considering all those good things that you have to say about Dominica and that your poem um, highlights the beauty of what's in Dominica in, in terms of our nature, our animals, crops, and so forth, what can you say inspired you to really write a poem about Dominica and its and its beauties? Um, well, it's, writing poetry isn't something I do very often, mm -hmm. but... Earlier, earlier last year, um, a very good friend of mine who I'd known for 40 years uh, died in England, not of COVID, but during the COVID time. And his daughter, who lived in Denmark, asked me to contribute. And so I wrote an, a poem about my friend Peter. And having, having kind of re-aroused my uh, <laughs> my poetic instincts I thought well Des Dominica deserves a poem so I set myself to writing one about Dominica oh that's lovely um your son Michael Lees is famous for his tale of how he spent the passage of Hurricane Maria in the jungle um as a parent how did you feel about this entire ordeal well, I mean, it was quite a shock. I mean, we live on the West Coast. Michael was over on the East Coast. We had no electricity, no telephone. We didn't know if he'd survived or not. I was a bit more optimistic than Cecily was, but, uh, you know, I mean, he's a resourceful lad. Um, but, yes, it was a week before... It was a week before the fallen trees and the landslides have been cleared to make it possible for Michael to hitchhike back across across the island and and, uh, and reach home. I mean, our home was badly damaged as well. It was um, not as badly damaged as some, but we had shingle sing, shingle roof tiles which all got blown off, ripped off, and there were no replacements on the island. It took us four months before we got some replacements. So every time it rained. The water was dripping in and we were having to spend time with mops and buckets, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, we, we, yeah, as soon as I got the tiles about mid-December, I put most of them on myself and just employed some builders to do the, the steeper bits that, uh, that, uh, that uh, I wasn't too confident about. And since then, we've, um, we've taken steps to make ourselves more resilient. Um, I built a big water tank that collects the rainwater, about eight foot by five feet. And uh, we bought a solar system. Oh, great. And mm -hmm. um, that, that was installed by a local person here, Lindsay George, who has Y2 power. It had eight solar panels, which I installed myself on a flat, flat piece of roof. And all the rest came in a big orange trunk on big casters. Uh, the eight lithium batteries in the bosom and the uh the the other bits of paraphernalia where we can see it on the on the top and uh, that has reduced our energy bills by i would say about 85 percent oh that's lovely so um do you have any plans on my final question by the way do you have any plans on writing any more poems can we expect more poems from mr lee <laughs> I don't know. It all depends whether uh, whether I get the inspiration or the the idea. It's not. Uh, it's uh, there's nothing 
on the immediate horizon. <laughs> let's put that way. Well, let's hope that you are inspired very soon. Okay, so this concludes the end of this interview. A special thank you to Mr. Colin Lees, a poet and writer of the poem titled Dominica Sublime. I would also like to say a special thank you to our viewers, supporters, and well-wishers. Please note that this is not the end of Authors Connecting. Kindly stay tuned for the next reading scheduled on the 21st of June at 6.30 p.m. Special attendance will be made by author Jesse Chandler Jr., who will discuss his recent book, namely West Indian Sin. The host for that special reading will be Trinidadian and American book critic, Miss Keisha Williams. This reading will take place at the Eastern Parkway Library. Kindly visit Tropical Fed's official website, Facebook page, and Instagram, and join our newsletter for further updates. Thanks again for tuning in and take care.